just up my alley. So <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, wonderful day. And um, yeah, like Lisa said, I, um, you know, I'm really working at the kind of the meeting place um, of, you know, kind of where science and art come together. Um, and really, this, this is nature. You know, this is this is the the vast um, kind of inspiration that that nature is is that you know we can you know meet nature in a in a scientific way right and um, kind of look at it you know scientifically biologically ecologically from a chemical perspective from a geological perspective um, you know as a botanist as you know. Um, you know, a mycologist, I mean, et cetera, et cetera, and really, you know, find inspiration, um, find language, um, you know, find, um, find camaraderie and, and um, culture, you know, in, in that way of seeing nature. And, um, you know, I like to dabble in, in that as well and, and live in that world. And, um, as we all are here um, in this gathering of community and culture, you know, we've, um, you know, experienced nature as, as inspiration for artistic and creative expression. And it is that as well. You know, it's, um, it's the place where we find wonder, you know, where we find mystery, where we find questions, right? Um, and, and, and poetry, right? And instead of, you know, kind of answers and equations and solutions. And I, I love that about nature. And um, I love that, you know, it is, it is fodder and, and, you know, kind of fertile for, for all of these things. So um, it's really a pleasure to be here. I really enjoyed so much um, looking at all the art that, that came to this, you know, kind of theme, um, the color of nature. And um, I was, you know, kind of particularly inspired by, you know, the, the language that we use when we talk about, you know, art. And, and there's this kind of um, language of, say, um, realism, right? And um, I heard that a lot in some of the interviews with the artists. And then there's, there's the very abstract. And, um, you know, and I love that people were working with the natural world, you know, um, in, in these ways, you know, in ways that inspired very um, realistic, you know, and very kind of concrete, um, you know, images. And then, you know, also inspired very kind of abstract. And even in the way that each artist was talking about their, their, their work, um, you know, these, these vocabulary words were coming up. And to me, that's very resonant because I think of, you know, science, right, as say very, you know, taking up in the, the house of realism, <laughs> right, so to speak. And then, um, you know, kind of the art, you know, um, taking up more of the abstract in terms of how does nature move us? You know, how does nature inspire us? Does it inspire us to have conversations around, you know, how it specific chemical compounds are found in, in plants, right? Um, you know, when I take somebody out into the field and I introduce them to dandelion, right? Um, I don't, you know, sometimes we have a conversation around, you know, the, the specific chemical constituents of dandelion, which heal the liver and the gallbladder, right? And are good for the kidneys and have been, you know, working their way into, you know, folk medicine and now, you know, traditional um, and conventional medicine, um, these, these chemical, these realistic, you know, um, realisms. Um, and, you know, that's one way of looking and seeing and being with the natural world, right? And, you know, another, you know, completely different way but also inspiring way is to look at the colors, right? 
of the plant of dandelion, you know, the forms, um, does it, you know, what makes it distinct, the shape of the leaves, right, the, the form of the flowers, and, you know, as we really explored in this exhibit, the colors, the colors of, of nature that really, you know, kind of come out and inspire. Um, you know, some of the art that I saw that, you know, kind of represents this realism and then the abstract and say may, maybe more the, the scientific and then the artistic, um, you know, for example, you know, the photos, um, some of the photos that come, came up, I really loved, um, I don't know if he's here, but um, Rick Misrock, and if I'm mispronouncing your name, I apologize, but um, the color of sunset, right, which was this beautiful, um, there you are, hi, Rick, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly, and you've got it as your background, right, um, and, you know, just this um, very real, you know, specific image, and, and those colors that, you know, are the actual colors of, you um, the landscape and you know using the medium of photography to you know not abstract that in any way but actually capture it you know and um and capture that that sunset and i love the story that you used of just like how it unfolded that you know you were over in dobbs ferry and you know it was like it was coming you know the sunset was coming and you were ready and you were you were gonna get that those colors and look what you did. I mean, it's beautiful. And, um, and so, you know, such a, a realistic, you know, kind of um, working with this, this inspiration of nature. Um, on the other hand, right, just going in a completely different direction. Um, uh, is Erica here? There is Erica. Hi, Erica. Yeah. Um, you know, your piece, which was you know, three-dimensional, right? This um, pyromania hot and cold, right? Which was um, a, you know, um, a, a textile piece. Um, and it had form and it had color and, you know, clearly a, a, a wonderful, you know, um, abstraction of um, what it seemed to me, you know, abstractions, you know, one can only interpret what the artist was was looking at but it really had a feel and um the look of fire and i think the name you know absolutely hints to that um but you know two really different um experiences to you know going from the the specifics of the photo right to this you know multi-dimensional kind of form of textile and and color that represents um the fire and not just one aspect of the fire but the hot and cold of the fire i really love that how you were going in that that direction with the naming um so it's just um you know that's just one example of these you know places how we are inspired and and how i see this inspiration um, of nature moving through this group and also how that inspires me i think that's one of the 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 wonderful things of working with the natural world is that a we can be inspired in this you know a variety of ways right from realistic to abstraction you know from scientific to creative um, and everything in between and all kinds of mediums but what i really love about inspiration and um and you know art is that it it's contagious right and it you know inspire inspiration begets inspiration begets inspiration you know it's um you know you can tell my excitement just from looking at all the art that you all created right and being a part of this and that you know it was out there in the world and that you had the opening and that everybody got to see it and um now there are conversations right and i think that that's um that's really the juice you know that i think i'm looking for not just as an artist but um or as an educator but as a human being is what 
you know, what's the inspiration that stimulates the conversations, right? That then creates the change. Um, and as an environmental educator, right, this is why I kind of work the two together. Because ultimately, you know, I'm trying to get people to have um, conversations about the natural world, right? And to be inspired to, you know, have relationships with the natural world, right? So that then through that relationship, through a healthy relationship, um, you know, we can better take care of our planet and take care of ourselves, right? And so how do we get there, right? How do we have those, um, those conversations that inspire people, right? To feel connected right, to the natural world. And again, you know, kudos to all of you for being a part of this conversation and for the creation of this theme that's got us all thinking about the natural world, right, and, and, and looking at um, the palette, you know, the incredible palette of, of nature. Um, the other thing that I really liked when I was reading through or listening to the, the artist stories is, you know, some of these images and some of this art um, came from memory. Um, and particularly, um, who was it that was saying? Oh, um, Barbara, who did the dance of the autumn trees, right? Hi, Barbara. Yeah. And um, in your story, I really love that, you know, um, because it's such a vivid image um, of these birch trees and, you know, the 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 colors and the of the leaves and the the dark blue of the sky and the 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 ground and everything's so, you know, rich and and vital. And I love that at the end you were like, this this kind of came from a memory right, of an experience. It wasn't, it didn't come from a photo, you know, it didn't come from, you know, an actual current present experience. It came from something that you remembered from childhood, which kind of leads a bit to its abstraction in a way, but I love that the image, right, is still with you and still playing out in your art from, you know, what probably was a long time ago. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I just think that that's, you know, again, the, the depth of our relationship with the natural world, you know, really comes out in these stories that like, as a child, right, you were at this place. And as a child, you form these images and these memories and still now, right, as an adult, you are processing and 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 having that that inspiration still to work with. Um, so that was really great. And then in contrast, um, Elaine, and where is Elaine? Elaine Langer. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. She might be on another screen, but she was saying um, she was doing her her kind of um, landscapes and up in Maine, and these were the, the plein air, right? The out in the open um, kind of experience where she was just, you know, receiving that inspiration actually in the moment, right? And it was coming out of her, you know, as she was receiving it. So again, the contrast between how we experience the natural world, how we, um, how we process, that experience and how deep that relationship is um, and and continues. And especially, you know, um, in these, you know, kind of conversations and these expressions um, that we're all sharing, you know, in, in this ex exhibit. So really, really, um, really exciting. And um, so I don't want to go on too much longer, but I do want to end um, with a bit of an exercise. Oh, where did, oh, did I go somewhere? No, you're here. Oh, I'm still here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so just to honor, right, these, these landscapes, these places, um, you know, whether they're from the, the present or the past, right? And to honor the, the relationship that, that we all have 
with the natural world. Um, I just want to take a moment to, you know, just kind of settle into the body and close the eyes. Um, if that feels okay for you. And let's just start with two deep breaths just to settle a bit. So in the nose and out the mouth. And again, deep breath in. And big exhale. Good. Okay, and then keeping the eyes closed, I want you to, you know, just allow yourself to go to a beautiful place, right? A beautiful landscape. Maybe it's some, maybe it's the one that you, you know, took a picture of or you painted about, you know, maybe it's, it's, it's that, maybe it's something completely different. Just allow yourself to go there. And let's engage our senses, right? So clearly we have a visual right of of this place right? and i know sometimes it's hard to hone in on just one place but do your best right so we've got a visual right let your kind of visual expand into your periphery and out to the horizon so you're really getting a sense of like the space around you and then let's start to engage the other senses right so the ears is there a sound of this place, right? What can you hear? What is the landscape right, telling you, speaking to you, right? Now, right, the scent, right? Breathing in, right? Oh, what are we smelling? What is this landscape giving us in terms of smell? So we've got the visual, we've got the smell, right? We've got the the hearing. And then I just want you to get a sense of the temperature, or maybe there's something right in front of you in the landscape that you can touch, right? Maybe it's the wind, right? Maybe it's cold, maybe it's warm, something around you that you can ground into. Yeah, and you're there. Good. And the, the next element, the last element is the element of gratitude. Here you are, this beautiful place in your mind, right? That you've been to, that you've had the blessing to experience, right? And just let yourself be grateful right? and thankful for that beautiful place. And take a deep breath in. And an exhale. Good. And you can open your eyes when you're ready. And just feeling, you know, a, a screen full of gratitude for the natural world, right? Um, and that we can draw upon these places, right? These senses, these, these visuals, these auditory gifts, these smells, and, and let them really, as we have and will continue to, right, be expressed, right, in our art, right, our visual art, you know, our music, our poetry, you know, our conversations with others, right, and the way that we continue to engage with the natural world. So um, thank you. Thank you all for your art and for letting the inspiration of nature move through you and be expressed through you in these incredibly diverse ways. It's such a pleasure. And um, yeah, I'm going to hand the mic back to <laughs> um, Lisa. And um, yeah, I'm excited to see how the night unfolds. 